So you want to make an object float automatically in Unreal Engine without having to animate anything by hand, but aren't sure how? Well, no worries. This is quick and easy to set up using Unreal's Blueprint system, and with just a handful of nodes, you too can have any object you want in a perpetual float cycle. First, let's create a new Blueprint script and choose the Actor template at the top. Next, we'll create a Timeline node that connects off the Event Begin Play node. This Timeline node will give us the flexibility to define whether the object moves in a sine wave, triangle wave, and saw wave fashion, among other options, when it comes to the float cycle animation. In this case, we'll do an ease in, ease out sine wave function, as that will provide the smoothest result for this purpose. Once the timeline is open, click on the plus track button in the top left corner and choose add float track. Rename it to float timing, and then set the length to one second and add three points to the timeline one at the very beginning with a value of zero, one in the middle with a value of one, and one at the end with a value of zero. After that setup, select all three points, right click, and then select Auto Function. This will add the Ease In, Ease Out component that I mentioned earlier. If you wish to have a different duration of the float cycle, that's really easy to adjust. Hop back over to the Blueprint Editor, drag the Timeline component into the Blueprint Editor, and select Get Timeline. Drag off the Timeline node and select Set Play Rate, and insert this node between the Event Begin Play and Timeline nodes. Next, we'll go back over to the Components tab and add a new variable by clicking on the plus icon. Then, name it to Float Cycle Length, while also clicking on the eye icon so this parameter is exposed on the outside of the blueprint. That way, it can be adjusted in the editor as opposed to jumping back into the blueprint. From here, drag the variable into the blueprint and select Get Float Cycle Length. Then, add a Divide node, which then gets connected to the New Rate input on the Set Play Rate node. Plug the float cycle length variable into the bottom input of the divide node and set up the top value to 1. This little setup will allow us to alter the length of the cycle without needing to jump back into the timeline node again. Now that the main timeline node is set up, drag off the finished output and then create another timeline node using the play from start input. This particular timeline node will be used to re-trigger the first timeline once it completes its cycle. As on its own, the timeline will only play through once, and therefore won't loop like we need. So open up the second instance of the timeline node, click on the plus track button, and add another float track. Change the time to 0.001 seconds, so we get an instantaneous re-trigger for the first timeline node. Once all of that is set up, take the finished output and then plug it into the play from start input on the first timeline node. This concludes setting up the looping functionality of the blueprint. Next, drag off the update output and add a set actor location node. From here, this is where we'll reference our desired actor that we wish to add the float cycle to. So for demonstration purposes, go to the components tab on the left side of the screen and add a cube. Then drag off the target input, type in cube, and select the Get Owner Cube option. This will allow you to reference whatever actor you may have in the Components tab of the Blueprint. Next, right click on the New Locations Vector input, and then split it so we have access to the X, Y, and Z inputs individually. This will give us the flexibility to control whatever direction you wish the object to move in. Since we're trying to make the object float up and down, the Z input is what we wish to modulate here. So drag off the Get Owner node and add a Get Actor Location node. Split the pin structure on this as well, then plug in the corresponding X and Y inputs. So that way you're able to move the blueprint around the scene without having to manually input the location for the X and Y axis every time you wish to use the blueprint. Once that's set up, the final thing to take care of is the Z input. Drag off the New Location Z input and add the LERP node. Then take the alpha input of the LERP node and plug it into the Float Timing output of the Timeline node. 
This is how you'll be able to influence the position of the actor in Z space, thanks to the timing specified with the timeline node setup. Now for the last variable, we need to be able to define the bottom point and top point of the float cycle. That way, the object doesn't stay static in one position. This is where the A and B inputs of the LERP node come in handy. So go back over to the left side of the screen, and under the Variables tab, click on the plus button twice to add two new variables. Rename these to Top Point and Bottom Point, then click on the Closed Eye icons so it will be exposed on the outside of the blueprint. That way, we have another quick and easy way to change the values when working inside the editor without having to come back into the blueprint. Drag both the Top Point and Bottom Point variables into the blueprint and select the Get option. Plug these two variables into the A and B inputs of the LERP node, and then everything should be good to go. You can also click on the top point and bottom point variables and add a default value that isn't zero, so it's possible to have a float cycle already set up when bringing the blueprint into the editor, say, a range from 100 to 200. From here, it's just a matter of swapping out the cube for whatever actor you see fit, as well as defining the float cycle length, bottom point, and top point values for whatever you need in your particular instance. If anyone has any questions, ways to improve the blueprint, or ideas for future videos they'd like to see, please feel free to leave a comment and consider subscribing. Thanks!